It's Don in Los Angeles. Hello? Hey. Hi. Hi. Uh, what, what's this bet about? We can't tell you Nothing. or else it, it'll <laughs> invalidate the bet. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, I want to talk about um, the extreme immorality of attempting to disprove the existence of God. Have you thought about this? Um, yeah, I've thought about it. I think you're wrong. Well, let me explain my position. Okay. If one were to, to come up with, a, uh, with an explanation or a proof beyond any kind of uh, refutation that God does not exist, um, all these religious people are going to come up and start killing people and doing all sorts of mayhem, and, and, I, so, and no one would be safe. So I think it's a completely immoral to even attempt to do such a thing. Just like we're, Tracy and I are out killing people right now as we're talking to you. <laughs> well, no, no, no. See, see, if if the existence of God were completely disproved, then uh -huh. everyone who uh, attaches their moral compass to the existence of God would be lost and justified to do anything they want to. Which Can you prove that? Okay, first, kill first of mean. all, first of all, are you, I'm not sure where you're coming from. Do you believe that God exists? I have no idea. Okay. Okay, so no. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, I, I fear I, religious I don't think... people who, who reject secular morality and, uh, and say that the only morality comes from the Bible. First of all, well, I want to say... The argument from fear is not an argument. So. Yeah, I mean, first <laughs> of all, I want to say that uh, I, you know, there is no such thing as absolutely disproving something because there are, there are people going around making all kinds of claims that have no basis in reality. There's people who think that we never walked on the moon and stuff. Right. Um, no matter how good a case you bring to the table, there's always going to be a lot of people who will just stick their fingers in their ears and go la 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 la. Uh, so, so that's never going to happen. But also, I question your premise because uh, it's you based know, on a, nothing. a lot of people go from Christian to atheist all the time, and in fact, we don't see a sharp uptick in people killing each other and. Uh, uh, and burning down orphanages. Yeah, I would say happens. many uh, many atheists are probably ex ex believers, and um, the atheists, you know, I mean, you can't stats. It's like you know, stats. You always have to wonder sometimes how they're gathered. But like, the, you know, there's really no statistics that show that uh, atheists are any less moral or less likely to be involved in crime than anybody that's religious. There are some stats that indicate that religiosity kind of correlates highly to some of these negative things, but I'm not going to you know, promote that as a solid, but I'm just saying that numbers wise, it doesn't seem to be the case. That it seems almost like taking God out of that equation would make people better. Right, and if anything, you should be kind of concerned about the religious system that makes this claim that there's no other reason to be good than that there's an invisible man in the sky watching you all the time. Well, yes, that, that is my concern, but okay. um, well, this then, is all I very mean, reassuring. Yeah, you should fight against <laughs> well, that. Um, I, I just want to say one thing, um, that I, I really appreciate your, when you discuss secular morality, that um, you know, talk about reason. Schopenhauer said that morality comes from compassion, and I think that that compassion comes from reason, which leads to empathy, which results in compassion, and and that's the basis of morality. I think I pretty much agree with most of that. I know some very reasonable people who aren't compassionate. That that is true. Well, there, I think the lack of empathy is actually a psychopathic disorder. Well, uh, you have to be careful because psychopathy is actually not like a, a recognized official, you know, mental term, like in, I guess, mental health field. Well, there's this thing called the psychopath test, but it's, I, I mean, you know, it's used by a lot of psychologists, but it's questioned by a yeah, lot I mean, of Yeah, I mean, sociopathy also. and psychopathy are not exactly, right. you know, I accepted terms as far as I'm aware. I mean, I should, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I, well, I remember reading. Well, they do talk about it. But, uh, but, the, but the idea is um, a person can be... Uh, uh, empathy could could be viewed as an inherited trait um, to some degree, and I think that the idea that somebody might not inherit that or might inherit uh, less of it than somebody else, um, it would be very difficult for me to like you know prejudge the person as being in, like unable to exist 
or coexist socially with others in a, in a decent way. I think that you can be non-empathetic and non-compassionate, and, and people might think that you're a bit of an ass, but they're less likely to, but, but it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to go around hurting people or doing things that are criminal. Do you mean sort of like in a Machiavellian way? Um, I just know that I know some people who would very much say that they are not empathetic and that uh, they would take exception to the idea that they are therefore, you know, not good people. Right. Well, I mean, but even some people who are not very empathetic can apply self-interest to realize yeah, that, I mean, it, they, have, that they, they, it's they should not like, act in a way that's socially acceptable. It's not like they don't understand right. the, the, the idea of fairness, for example. They can mm -hmm. comprehend the concept of fairness. They just don't have these uh, accompanying feelings. And, and I agree it or, makes it tougher. I mean, it does make it difficult. It's, it's much easier to you know, to extend that when you have that automatic sort of kick in feeling that goes with it. But not everyone has that. And, you know, sometimes that can result in people doing bad things. But if you think about it, sometimes having a lot of feeling can result in a really bad thing. You know, a lot of times a lot of crime is, violent crime is based on like emotions uh, running amok. So, uh, you well, know. Well, I, th I think some people can deny that they have empathy. Uh, by coming to the reasonable conclusion that, uh, say, uh, I'm talking about the people on Wall Street who have destroyed the economy to their own benefit. They, they make a, a rationalization about uh, their lack of empathy vis-a-vis uh, -vis their, their monetary gain. Right. Well, I, I mean, there are a lot of complex calculations that go into moral decisions, and, and some of them include people have more or less empathy, and also uh, some of them are, some of them involve uh, what kind of parameters and rules society has put up and what you're accountable for and how, how they regard actions that are hurtful to other people. And I don't want to go off in the weeds and yeah. get all political, but I, I But mean. there is a difference. There is a difference between the person who so lacks won't. compassion and the person who is endowed with malicious, you know, malevolence. It's not necessarily, you know, always bundled together like that. Right. And I think most people don't think of themselves as malevolent. A lot of them <laughs> think of themselves as like appropriately I guess you I'm know, thinking selfish. in terms of like Ted Bundy, that would be malevolence, <laughs> right. you know. I mean, that, yeah, and, and sure. some people would look at that as, you know, un, 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 unempathetic or uncompassionate. Yeah, I, I and mean, yes, he but, lacks but compassion. Even and empathy, like but. Hitler went out of his way, you know, and here I am with Godwin's Law, but, uh, you know, he went out of his way to justify, you know, oh, I'm really doing God's work here. Um, well, I, I think rationalization most... can go a long way with a lot of people. Yeah, it's true. But I mean, but going back to the, the concept of secular morality and the basis of it, um, whether or not some people possess empathy or not, I think by reason, uh, if if one applies reasonable principles, one will, uh, I, I, one will come to uh, empathy and therefore compassion, and and by that. Build a basis of a morale of, of a uh, of, of an ethic. I understand. I just I question whether or not empathy can be uh, born of reason. Uh, I think that if a person lacks empathy, they may not be able to right. gain it by reasoning, but they can gain the the understanding that behaving in a fair way when you're a social animal in a society is actually beneficial to themselves and others. Yeah, and people are short-sighted all the time. I mean, if people just acted uh, in, in the best interest of everyone all the time, we wouldn't need to have any laws. But we do okay. have laws, and they're pretty extensive and complicated, and for the most part, even somebody who'd like to kill a guy is usually <laughs> deterred by the idea that he might rot in a prison cell for the rest of his life. And even smaller scale things like, you know, as much as I might want to run a red light, uh, there are a lot of traffic laws which won't put me in a prison cell for life, but will cost me a bunch of money that I can't really get out of paying. Uh, well, so, that, so you know, of... there are there are behavioral modifications that happen through legal channels as well as people just doing the right thing because they're empathetic. Yeah, society imposes, uh, you know, pressure and, and restrictions. Well, running a red light is kind of a violation of a contract in which we all agree that we're going to stop at red lights so that when it turns green, we can go. 
mm-hmm. um, and violating that is is uh, you know a lack of ethic. But if if you don't think that empathy leads to morality or that reason leads to empathy, then what is the basis of secular morality? Well, I think opinion? I think empathy is something that is part of being a social animal. I mean, you know, uh, other social animals exhibit empathy, and they you know surely are on a different level of reasoning than most people. I mean, they reason, but they uh, they reason differently, and they reason to different degrees. And um, but they're still they still display empathy. But that's a social. I mean, that's a that's an inbred social trait. Yeah, and I said I mostly agree with you. I mean, I think for the most part, uh, uh, you know, reason and empathy do go together. We're just saying it's not sufficient. Right. Yeah. And and I think that I, I'm just saying that that if a person lacks empathy, reason's not going to endow them with it. They might be able to reasonably see the benefit of it, but it doesn't. It's not going to make them feel. Reason right. doesn't make you feel things. Um, and, and on the other hand, someone could be empathetic to a fault. I mean, you could be so empathetic that you, uh, or co- compassionate, that you actually allow something that's really bad because you, you know, you feel too much for the person, and you know, you then, you know, give them another chance or whatever. They go out and kill more people. It, you, you have to sort of rein it in. I, I think empathy needs to, you know, and compassion. These feelings need to be uh, combined with reason, definitely. Um, but if you lack the feelings, I don't know that reasoning can give you those feelings, but it can get you to understand the value of, of uh, interacting fairly in your society. Well, I, I would say that the inability to accept that value would be the inability to reason. It's not about not accepting a value. It's about you can't force someone to feel things. I might, I might be in a relationship, for example, where I'm married to somebody that I don't love, and there's a lot of great benefits to the marriage. And I'm thinking, gosh, it would reasonably, I, I wish I loved them because it would really make this easier. But I don't love them, and I don't know if I can stay in this relationship just for these pragmatic benefits. But boy, how much better would it be if I did love them? You can't reason yourself into feelings. I mean, you can try, and I think to some extent you might be able to, you know, consider something and then gain some feeling if you have the capacity for that feeling. But you have to remember, not everybody might have the capacity for empathy. So you're you're saying that empathy is more of an emotional feeling than, well, absolutely. than a, a cognitive process. Yeah, yeah, it's the idea that that yeah. I feel like you're like me. But it's one of many things that goes into making moral decisions. Uh, anyway, I think we're going to move on to another caller. Well, thank you for taking my call. Okay. I will go ahead and tell you that we get a lot of people who are repeat callers who call with inflammatory sounding topics uh, at just to yank our chains. And Tracy thought you were one of those, and now she owes me a trick. Yeah, based on <laughs> I'm not going to hold you. That, that was based on the description of the topic. Actually, I, it was a I, reasonable uh, guess, but I you've been Russell, very nice. Yeah, I, I owe Russell a drink. I, I think I deserve the drink. <laughs> I think well, I need one. Oh, well. <laughs> well, thank okay. you very much. Uh, yeah, you. bye, Don. Bye. 